Hi everyone, my name is Matt. I'm a scientist and university professor and creator of Eureka Labs. Discoveries are the backbone of science in order to discover new genes and to cure diseases. And I've recently discovered a new way to make connections between information in order to make discoveries. And so today we're starting a new project to help you become more creative in your work, to make new connections, and ultimately to be more impactful. It's time to stop forgetting and start connecting. Whether you're a scientist working in a lab or a new breed of content creator and knowledge worker, we all need better ways to handle this onslaught of information that comes at us daily in this digital age. Well, how do we do that? Well, it all starts with the lowly note. Now, 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 hear me out. You're saying he's gonna tell us about note taking? Yes, I'm going to tell you about note taking, but I'm going to tell you about note taking in the 21st century how we can use digital tools to help us handle this onslaught of information and to leverage the connections between these tools in order to come up with better and more creative and impactful ideas. So let's just do a simple test. Think about the last book or article you read. Put it in your mind. Okay, now try to come up with the key points that you wanted to remember from that book or article. Still there? Now. How much specificity can you give? If you were to explain those key ideas to me right now, would you be able to? If you can answer yes to these questions, then congratulations. You have a productive and working knowledge management system. However, if you cannot, if you read something and struggle to remember the key ideas, and then a day, a week, a month later, it's completely forgotten, you're not alone. You are like the rest of us. So what we need is something that's called a personal knowledge management system. And this idea of these PKM systems are really something that is taking off these days because software is enabling us to capture information, organize and store that information. But then importantly, this is the most important part, to be able to review that information and to find connections between it. And that's the key here. That's the difference. A personal knowledge management system has at least four steps. The first step is to think about how we get data into the system. We call this capture. When we capture information, we might get this from podcasts, from books or articles that we read, from YouTube videos we see, from ideas that we have while we're jogging or in the shower. We need some way to capture ideas. Oftentimes these can be sparked by something that we hear or see, but sometimes these are intrinsic. And regardless, we want to be able to capture them. The second part that we want to think about is after we capture the idea, we have two steps in this process. We want to cull, compress this down. So really what this means is we want to think about how we are going to then take all of this raw information that we have, and we want to start to pare it down. Cull means we're removing some of these components that we might not need. We thought it was a good idea at the time, but we don't actually think so anymore or we have an idea already that's related to the idea that we just captured, so we can call this one. We don't need to have redundancy in our system. And in this process, we take these ideas that we have, we take this information, and we start to make it simpler. We want to compress this down and distill it into the essence of the idea. The third step is going to be curate and to connect. When we capture a raw idea, we need to start to shape this idea into something. And this is what I call the curation process. We also want to connect this idea to other ideas. This process really is trying to um, take, again, this raw concept, this raw information, and really start to turn it into something that is ours and something that can be connected to, to something else. The last step, step four, this is the creation process. We want to create from this idea. So we want to navigate and explore and have these moments where we can make these connections and then have an opportunity to build within a system. When we are creating, whether it's an idea, a paper, a book, a manuscript, a video idea, a podcast questions, notes, etc., we want to have some infrastructure that allows us to create within it. We don't want to have a separate system. We don't want to say, I use this system for writing and I use this system for thinking. Really what we want to do is mix these systems and have them available so that when we are in the act of creating, we have access to these ideas. So these are essentially the four steps of a personal knowledge management system. What we want to really focus on though is 
infrastructure that will allow us to create within it, infrastructure that will allow us to, um, to connect some of these ideas, and infrastructure that allows us to really capture all of these elements of this system in order to, uh, to be more impactful and more creative in our work. One integral part and the most exciting part of this new personal knowledge management system is something called a knowledge graph. Knowledge graphs are going to change the way that we think about ideas and the way that we think about information and how we connect that information to turn it into knowledge. Let me show you a couple of examples of a knowledge graph. The first one I want to tell you about is Rome Research, or more effectively referred to just as Rome. Rome describes itself as an online workspace for organizing and evaluating knowledge. Their system is built on a directed graph, which frees itself from the constraints of a classic file tree. Again, this is one of the most powerful and useful elements of these knowledge graphs is that they aren't constrained to a hierarchical structure of folders or an organization of a computer file system. So let me show you what this looks like. So Rome is $15 a month or a slight discount if you um, buy the year. And um, I'm gonna show you one example of a Rome graph that's shared with me, which is a new project that Rome has started that's called Book Club. This book club then will be a good example of what the Rome interface looks like. This is an example of Rome Research's interface. Here I'm showing you a daily note. This is November 12th. And these are the different people that have made notes or block references on this daily note. Let me show you all of the pages within this project here. So you can see that here's the daily note today. And here's the daily note from yesterday and several other pages and notes that other people have made. Now, the power really comes from the graph view. So this is Rome's graph view. What we can see is that each one of these is a block reference that then is connected through its ideas to other ideas. So if we then zoom in, we can start to see one example is how to take smart notes. So this is a book that was uh, the topic of Rome's book club. But you could see that several people have then made connections to this, one of which is Sonka Ahrens, which is the author of this book. So then if we click on Sonka's name here, we can see where he then is connected to other ideas. So the power then is to see you have an idea here, and the idea then is connected to another idea, which is connected to another idea, and so on. You can see this is quite a mature project, and like any network graph, this is what we would affectionately refer to as a hairball. We can then come over here, and we can add some pages to our shortcuts. Again, this is the Worms Book Club, so we can say, welcome to the book club. If you haven't signed up, please do so here. Create a page with your name, set up your page, and so on. So here are some instructions because this is a multi-user uh, collaborative project. So this is an example really where the power comes from having one idea connected to another idea, connected to another idea, and so on. So you can see some of the most connected ideas are the chapters within the book, the book itself. Let's see what else here. We'll just explore a little bit. Chapter three, everything you need to have. What is this one? Chapter eight, let your work carry you forward, and so on. All right, let's go check out another example of a knowledge graph. Obsidian is a powerful knowledge base that works on top of a local folder of plain text markdown files. So unlike Rome, Obsidian is going to store files on your personal computer that then is written in a, a language that's called markdown a pretty intuitive and simple language. And then a knowledge graph is generated from all of the markdown files within a given directory. So let's see what that looks like. This is an example of my growing knowledge graph for the Eureka Labs project. What you can see here is that there are some notes here that are highly connected to other notes. And then there are some notes that are not yet connected. So what we can then do is we can zoom in and we can find notes like here's a, a relevant one, which is called, uh, my note is called personal knowledge management. So this is my note that is related to personal knowledge management. This is my live, living, growing note where I am exploring the ideas related to personal knowledge management and these personal knowledge management systems, which I'm telling you about. So some of the steps that we've been describing about capturing, and culling, and curating. In fact, I've added a couple more steps. I think that here, compression, compressing goes in. And here, I think that connecting also is added in. 
and then lastly creating. There's a couple of other ideas, I'm not really sure where they go, something about communicating maybe, something about retaining a recall might also be added. But what you can see is that this is a, a growing live note where I am exploring the ideas about personal knowledge management systems. Now if I come back to my graph, I can see that this then uh, updates and I can make connections and I can look at all of the different um, uh, notes that I have here that are related to personal knowledge management. So when I then make a link within here, which is what these are, if I look in this view, then I can go and find a, a, a linked note that's based on the concept of compression. And I have some information about it here. I can then come back and I can look at ideas about abstraction. And these are my ideas about what abstraction really is and so on. So the idea then is I can explore this, I can add to it, I can build from it. And then when I want to start writing something about personal knowledge management, I have multiple ideas that are right here. But then also I have rationale for why is this important? And I have sort of links to other uh, con concepts within computational thinking and within different types of thinking, such as abstraction. So this is another example of a knowledge graph by a small company called Obsidian, which I've grown to like and use. In future videos, we will show you step by step how to set up and establish your own knowledge graph. Now, there's no shortage of videos on the internet about how to generate a knowledge graph. What I want to show you though is the zero entry, step by step way that you can do this for yourself. It doesn't require any complicated coding, it doesn't require you knowing any programming languages, it just requires that you have the motivation and the desire to try to make better ideas, to make connections between those ideas, and the desire to start. If you like this video, go ahead and let us know. If you want to be alerted when we release new videos about how to specifically make your first knowledge graph, go ahead and hit the light bulb in the corner to subscribe, and you'll be alerted when we release new videos.